let me tell you about my friend Andy Chapin. Uh, in uh, roughly uh, 1975 or 1976, uh, I was at a very down point in, the, in my life. I was living in a, a dirty, dusty uh, apartment in Van Nuys, California, uh, where the, it seemed that the ambulances and, and uh, uh, semi-trailers would drag race up and down Van Owen Boulevard. Uh, and I was attempting to uh, to make music, and uh, one of my neighbors uh, uh, introduced me to uh, a fellow that lived across the street uh, in a little house set back from the from the road, uh, a musician named Andy Chapin. Andy had uh, had performed with Steppenwolf. Uh, he was an accomplished uh, uh, pianist, uh, but his main instrument was the Hammond B3 organ, and he had a had a, had a uh, uh, a terrific uh, B3 that uh, a, pa a past girlfriend had beaten to death with a with a ball peen hammer and it had to be uh, rebuilt. Uh, Andy at this time was happily married to uh, Lisa uh, and she was a great gal and uh, uh, and and so I began to uh, record songs with Andy. I would, I would go over to his place and uh, I had a uh, a TAC 3340 recorder, uh, one of the first uh, uh, consumer and uh, multi-track recording machines, and uh, we did a lot of recordings. Uh, and so over the years, we be we became good friends and, and did a lot of recording together. Andy went on to be in the association, uh, the group that did uh, uh, Windy and uh, 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 a, a number of hits uh, during the 60s uh, and then uh, uh, and we recorded at their studio uh, on New Year's Eve 1985 uh, Andy was was playing with Rick Nelson's Stone Canyon band and the, uh, uh, the band uh, uh, Andy had hated the DC-3 airplane a World War II uh, cargo plane that that uh, uh, that, that uh, Rick Nelson had, uh, but he, he agreed to go on the final tour with, with, uh, uh, with the band. His final tour with the band, uh, on, uh, without the DC three, and he would only, only uh, uh, go on a, on the common carriers. Andy had told me, he was deathly afraid of that airplane. Uh, uh, They'd had an engine fire over Palmdale and things like that. So that uh, his, his condition for going on one last tour uh, with the Rick Nelson Stone Canyon Band was that uh, that they not use the DC-3. Well, on on uh, New Year's 1985, uh, they were in Dothan, Alabama, and uh, there were no flights out of Dothan to Dallas uh, uh, for their New Year's Eve show, which was the last show of the tour. So uh, the DC-3 popped up. Uh, I can only imagine uh, how they enticed Andy on, onto the airplane, but I'm sure drugs were involved. And uh, the, the, uh, uh, they got on the plane. Now, uh, uh, later stories said that, they, that the plane caught fire from, from them freebasing uh, uh, cocaine. Uh, I don't believe that story was true at, at all. In fact, uh, the forensic evidence showed later on that uh, what happened was that the, the plane had a belly heater that was outside and underneath the airplane, and it caught fire. Uh, and they, they, they were asphyxiated uh, as the plane was, uh, was uh, trying to land. Uh, the pilots uh, flew across a, a freeway uh, and into and outside of Dallas, uh, into a stand of uh, uh, into a field, and then came to a uh, halt at a stand of trees. Uh, the pilot and the and the, the plane was fully engulfed at that point uh, in flames. But the pilot and the co-pilot were both tossed through the uh, through the windshield, and uh, I'm told that they survived. But uh, everybody else inside uh, uh, perished in that in that. Uh, in that fire, uh, it was it was unbelievable 
you know, she, Andy was a, a dear man and a gifted talent, and I, he had a lot more to give. But uh, uh, his he, he's a footnote in history as, as having uh, perished with Rick Nelson and the Stone Canyon Band. All right. <laughs>